This is Steve Sauter. I'm sitting here in the Preston Rogers Bassett Planetarium, the second floor of Morgan Hall, which turns out to be my favorite building on campus. It was built in 1853 as the library for Amherst College, and it is a stunning building in the architectural style of Italianate. It's built of Pelham Nice, a beautiful gray stone native to the area. And when it came time in 1960 for the college to put in a planetarium, they found the perfect room for the planetarium. They needed a room that was more than 30 feet high in its ceiling and uh, about 30 feet wide to put in this enormous dome. And it turned out that the main library room in Morgan Hall was the place to do it. So what's great about this is that the story is entangled with the story of the space age and one of Amherst College's alums. Uh, the planetarium itself was donated by a man named Preston Rogers Bassett, class of 1913. And after he left Amherst College, he went down to the New York City area where he worked as an engineer with the Sperry Gyroscope Corporation. Uh, and as he worked there, he moved his way up in the company, eventually becoming president of the company. And by the time World War II rolled around, Sperry was making uh, gyroscopes for rockets and jet aircraft. They then merged with the Rand Corporation, becoming Sperry Rand, and eventually merged to become the giant corporation Unisys. Uh, and Mr. Bassett became vice president of that enormous uh, conglomerate. <clears throat> During the 50s, when he was uh, a vice president at Unisys, he was really involved in the creation of what was going to become NASA before the space race even got started. When he retired, Mr. Bassett decided that he was going to give away all the money that he had earned in his lifetime. And what I find more remarkable about this is that when a man retires you know, at age 65, 62, they normally don't live more than another 10 or 15 years. But Preston Rogers Bassett lived to be over 100 years old, which gave him something like 30 years, 35 years, to give away his money. And one of the beneficiaries was the planetarium itself. The reason he chose the planetarium uh, in 1960 is that we were then beginning to space race. Um, in 1957, the Soviet Union launched the first man-made satellite, uh, Sputnik, and the next morning, as its signal uh, was heard around the United States over radio waves, the United States was stunned to wake up and realize they were losing a space race that they didn't even know they were in. Uh, and so immediately thereafter, there was a great interest in space education, astronomy education, the training of astronauts, the training of pilots, and planetariums started going up all over the country. And our planetarium, a Spitz A3P projector, uh, was one of the first ones installed and is essentially unchanged since 1960. It's a 30-foot in diameter dome, uh, the room seats 60, uh, the projector itself produces about 1,500 star images, essentially all the eye, all the uh, stars that you can see with your eye, plus a few other objects. Uh, and it's a remarkably quality, um, quali <laughs> a remarkable, remarkable instrument for producing beautiful star fields. Uh, these days, when I go off and I see brand new planetariums being built, uh, they're typically being built with digital machines, and the star image quality is far, far inferior to what this 48-year-old machine can still produce. While it was used for astronomy education here at Amherst College in the 1960s and the training of astronauts and pilots, these days it gets used mostly for public school groups, um, various groups such as learning and retirement, and of course uh, uh, shows during alumni weekend, reunion weekend, family weekend, that sort of thing. And it's used mostly for the, um, the teaching of observational astronomy, the constellations, what are their shapes, what are the stars' names, how do the planets move around the sun, why do we have winter and summer here in Amherst. Uh, the movement of the planets, particularly some interesting little motion called retrograde motion. Can we demonstrate that? And all of that can be done with this analog optical machine. 